Alrighty then. Okay, so we're getting back together again. Again, I've made this recording. This is the second time because my father called me in the middle of it. And I know a lot of people are going to say, Wesley, why don't you just put it on airplane mode so that you don't receive those phone calls? Well, because I run a business where there are people around that need to call me and talk to me. And it's no big deal to take another 10 minutes of my time to make this video. So you're going to see me crawling around on my knees because I can't put the baler up on the bench like so many people would like me to do to save my knees. Uh, and uh, you know what? To be quite honest with you, it's good exercise crawling around on your knees. You know, it's called groveling to my baler god. But anyway, yeah, um, this collision was quite devastating. The total cost is going to be somewhere as close to nine grand after the shipping and everything, which is a lot of money. Obviously, it's a lot of money. Um, you know, but, uh, yesterday I bailed hay and it was more than enough to make up for the, uh, for the, uh, the, the broken pickup. Uh, these things happen and there's so, a couple of YouTubers on that. Well, one in particular, but we won't mention his stupid name until the end of the video, which is kind of funny because, you know, he's, we're just brutal. We're brutal. And I apologize in advance, but not really. <laughs> anyway, um, these things happen. I mean, obstructions are in fields. And, uh, you know, people do things that you don't know about. And, uh, you know, it has a lot to do with the person that's raking, whether you hit an obstruction or not. Because they're the first one across the field before you run this very expensive baler over the field. So, you know, if uh, <coughs> if it wasn't dark when we were raking... Maybe Joe would have saw the saw the uh, stump. Um, Dad had mowed the the farm and he went around it with the mower, and that's why there was hay there. So what Joe did naturally was to rake the hay that Dad had gone around the stump with into and over top of that stump. So no, it's not the property owner's fault. Like I said in the last video, it's just you know, hey, it's it's an obstruction. It's the way things are. Uh, you, you go to the field, you take on a risk, uh, especially if it's property owners, you know, uh, you know, properties that you don't normally go on, but once or twice a year, uh, things happen. Uh, if you see that someone is cleared out a fence or something, you can pretty much bet that there's a piece of wood someplace, you know, that you're going to run into and things like that. So, uh, you know, it's, it's just the way we are. Now, if I was a custom harvester, I would probably run into this a little more often because I would be in fields that I don't know at all. And there are several fields that I don't know about, you know, when I go into places. And you take extra precautionary um, measures, like, like really keep your eyes peeled. Don't bail in the dark because you don't know what the hell you're going to run into. Perk tests, soil logs, um, tree stumps firewood last year i hit firewood and yes that was on a farm that i don't normally farm it was given uh it was a place that was given to me to take the hay off of so yeah so anyways uh it, it's just par for the course yes i do have an insurance policy and no i will not be putting the uh i will not be putting in a claim uh, if anybody that ha that farms knows that if you put too many claims in, your insurance policy goes through the freaking roof, and they get it back, they get it, they get all that money back tenfold. And you know, I've had a few claims over the years, and I'm still on insurance jail, as you may call it. I haven't been able to uh, get that reduced just yet. Used to be three years, now it's five years, but it's not really. It's six years. So anyway. Since 2011, I'm in my final year of probation or um, insurance jail. Uh, and yes, I probably have paid back every penny that they gave me uh, for the truck, the mower, the tractor, you know, all that stuff. It's just, it's crazy. It's crazy. So when someone says, oh, you're just milking the insurance company. Well, no, actually, I'm not. <laughs> it's, it's, you pay for the policy, and if you have one claim, yeah, you make out. You have two claims, eh, maybe. Three claims, you're fucked. So anyways, we're just about ready to pick this thing up and get it where it belongs. And uh, as you may or may not know, Crone has these modular designs, and you have these big pieces that are put together uh, and assembled rather quickly. Very quickly, actually. I mean, it's 
the tedious work is done, um, what me and Teresa did with the tines, um, and now we're just setting the the uh, we're just setting that rotor in the right place. It has to be dead center in the frame that we had replaced, and of course, you know, uh, we adjust it a little here and there, make sure everything's proper. Carl's working on his side, I'm working on my side. Um, we got a locking collar. Once it's in the right spot, there's a locking collar you put on, and then there's spacers for the for the gears and the and the the uh, the uh, sprockets and everything, because everything has to be aligned. Um, and as you're doing these this job, you're looking at other pieces along along the way in case there was some hidden damage and things. And there is room for improvement. If you look over Teresa's right shoulder, where that hammer is, um, that flighting that's right there <coughs> on that upper accelerator, there is a catch point there where the hay will wrap when it gets to a certain moisture. And I haven't cut it off yet. But it's coming. I'm going to cut that sucker off of there. I'm not going to cut the whole flighting off. I'm just going to change the the aggressiveness of that flighting. I'm going to make it so that there's no way that it can grab hay. I'll make it smooth and I'm going to change that pitch. You can see it right there uh, how aggressive it is. So when that flighting comes around, if the hay is damp as it's pulling around the corner, it will just grab that hay if it's long enough and wrap it. It'll even grab short hay. It just, it's just that flighting needs to be adjusted. So I'm going to adjust it, uh, both sides. I ended up being eight times short on the uh, pickup reel. So I gotta, you know, today is Tuesday. So I'm gonna have to call Messick's up and get them to ship me out another 15 or so times. They're like six bucks a piece. So that, you know, they're not cheap. You know, nothing's cheap. But I will say that if this was the New Holland BB340 crop cutter, it would, and I did this very same damage to it, it would have been a couple of thousand dollars more to do the repair to it. It would have been a complete new reel, which, you know, I know that reel assembly to be over $5,000 alone. This one here was four, so there's a thousand dollars there. And I know that the frame in the back of this, uh, the reel on a New Holland is up somewhere around three thousand dollars so you got five six seven eight thousand dollars plus two thousand dollars of shipping it would have been ten thousand bucks um and it would have been longer to repair it uh it took me a full day to put a to put a header on and it's more clumsy than this because it's one great big piece that you have to put together all at once and uh, whereas this one here is just really quite simple modular design uh, so now we've moved on to the bands and uh, the bands are going on quite easily uh, they're just you know again tedious work you know got me and Teresa in there working uh, putting the, the screws on and because the threads are brand new uh, a couple times they just did not want to they just didn't want to thread on I ended up with a uh, a, a, a tap set tapping out the threads or chasing threads because they were just you know I think they could have did a little better job in the in the uh, in the threading of this thing uh, there was no paint in it it was threaded after it was painted so I'm sure it was drilled and then they ran their threading device down through there or they're in their jig uh, at Crone to, to to thread it but they were on a slight angle which I thought was odd and every single one of them was on an angle uh, so if, if you know the way we were facing this the screws and I didn't show it but they they leaned a little to the left from the front of the you know from the front of the uh, the, the the pickup um, I will say that it is a lot easier to put a uh, to put the bands on the uh, the pickup than it is on the chrome pickup than it was on the New Holland oh and there was uh, like I said earlier that you know, you're always looking for other things when you're doing a repair like this to see if there's any problems or whatnot. And, uh, of course, there's always problems. You know, there's always problems. Uh, there's That was just a little weld that Cody had to do. And uh, I, I let Cody do the welding. He's in school to become a welder and uh, uh, an engineer kind of guy. You know, that's what he's supposed to be doing. So, 
Yep, yep. But anyway, we're just about done here. Um, just doing the finishing touches on the uh, on the the uh, yeah the roller wind guard. I changed it a little bit. Um, there's a deflector behind the roller wind guard that was facing downward a lot more than it, I felt that it should. And uh, so I changed the, the pitch on the deflector. And then I went behind the def the uh, roller wind guard mount, and there's two springs, one on either side. I actually tightened those up a little bit more. Uh, I was having bulldozing problems, you know, because there was too much weight on that roller wind guard when it was you know in the in the wind row so i changed the 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 pressure or the tension on that spring which allowed the roller wind guard to float a little better so yeah now it's all back together we're kind of bullshitting and uh, reveling in our success and putting this thing together and uh, you know you see me standing there in the shade because we're done i mean we are done Timmy Corn Picker's uh, field called me up a few weeks ago. He's like, hey, you want this foxtail? I'm like, yeah. And, of course, I never got around to mowing it with all the other ground that I have to deal with. So the other day, he said, hey, I'm going to mow that foxtail, and you come up and get it. And of course, I broke the baler. So I think he was a little nervous, but... We got her back together again, and this is the first field I'm doing after the repair, so. And it seems like it's feeding really well. Very smooth, yeah, actually. very smooth. Almost better than it was before. Absolutely. I, I don't know why, though. I mean, yeah. it doesn't make any difference. It's not like I put new bearings or anything in. They're it's all the same. Smoother. So, yeah, it's kind of strange. And it doesn't clog. It's not even super dry hay either. I mean, we're talking regular thickness hay. Huh? You know, it's foxtail and it's got some corn stalks in with it, so that always adds to the mix. But uh, yeah, you can check out Timmy Corn Picker's channel. He's probably going to have some video up on this. And uh, yeah. We had to hear Elton cry like a whiny little waxed over bitch. You hanging over? There you go. What is he whining about? I don't know why he whines. Somebody had a really good comment about him though. They're like, you ought to do something with that goatee. He looks like a, a 1970s porn star. He actually does. He does <laughs> though, doesn't he? Ew. You know, when he said that, I was like, you know, I knew he looked creepy, but porn star creepy? That's pretty bad. Oh, well, anyway. You better edit that. You're not supposed to. Oh, I'm that. totally going to put it up. I don't give That's a That's mean. It is mean, but I don't care. You don't have to be mean. The man threatened me. All the gloves are off, man. You're going to threaten me? Threaten to kick my ass. I don't know. He threatened to kick your ass? Yeah, he said that he was going to meet me at uh, Messix, you know, like, come on, man. And then he deleted it. I thought that was kind of funny. He's good at deleting comments. So, you know, as long as he's deleting comments, it holds part, man. She's working. How many did we start out with? 7772. 7772? Yes. Oh, that'll be. We're at 7786 now. I guess I got 15. Yeah, we're probably going to get a truckload of shit on there. And this only given? Yep. Nice. What do they say? If it's free, it's for me? It's for me. It's free, it's for me? Yeah, if it's free, it's for me. just had corn in here. I think he said he was going to put barley in. Uh, it's too late for barley now. But he might be going to put wheat in here. 